Next, Andrew, James, Andrew, John, don't match. Next, James, John, James, James, oops, almost, not quite. Next, John, Andrew, John, Andrew, not quite. And look at next one, Philip, 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 Philip. What does that tell you? You all agree on Philip is a unit group leader. Unique. It's a group leader. In other words, Jesus divided the apostles into smaller groups. And those whose name appear like horizontally across, that means they are unit heads. They have their opposition of responsibility among the twelve. Bartholomew? Almost, not quite. Thomas? No. Matthew? No. Now, James, son of Alphaeus. Yes, he's, he's the next one. So we have Simon Peter, who is the prime apostle, and then Philip, and then James, the son of Alphaeus. So those are the three. So the, the group of Simon Peter, we have Andrew, we have John, and James. The group of Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew. You got that? Mm -hmm. The group of James, son of Alphaeus, Judas Tadeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot. Now what about Judas Iscariot? Almost. <laughs> you see? He was missed in Acts chapter 1. How come his name is not in Acts chapter 1? He's dead. He was already dead. In the book of Acts, wrote, written by Saint Luke. See, told you, blessed man. <laughs> See, no more Judas Iscariot because he was already dead. Interesting for you. Yes, it is. I think it's better than my face. Yeah. <laughs> You see? Only in Bible class, this information. I had to prove it to myself that it does indeed exist, that there is such thing as groupings among the twelve. So how many groups are there? Three. Three groups. Remember, it was Philip who invited who invited who? Who did Philip invite? Peter. No. Bartholomew, the tiny one. Remember he was sitting under the fig tree? Okay? It's extra for you. Next. <clears throat> Last Sunday. Follow me, I am meek and humble of heart. Being humble. That's true greatness. You know, there's a, here's an example of humble, of humility. Blessed, not Anne, uh, Teresa, Mother Teresa. <laughs> she was talking to one, I guess, leper, or well, one of those that they're taking care of in the missions, missionaries, missions charity. She was taking care of and talking to her. And then there was somebody who wanted to speak. 
as, as soon as, and, and that person waited patiently until she was done. And then you know what she did? She went to the person who was waiting. And you know what she asked the person? Who do you, who do you wish to speak? Because normally you would, you would expect, oh, I'm the one who is in charge here, so is, uh, you want to speak with me? But that's not what she said. Is the, uh, who do you want to speak with here among these people? Patients, one of the sick, one of those filthy ones, one of those lepers. She didn't ask, you want to speak with me? No. She said, you want to speak with anyone here? Through no humility. She would not assume that the person would wish to speak with her because there's lack of humility. Did you get that? Very, very simple illustration, demonstration of humility. The greatest, true greatness is being humble. Almost every week we talk about being humble. You must be very humble now. <laughs> Every yeah, week, you come here, how humility, humility, humility. We always <laughs> Authority not their own. Look at this word, authority. There's a root word here, look. You see that? The word authority, there's a root word, author. Author, authority. You know what it means? All authority is under the headship of God. Who is the author of everything? God is. God is the only creator. So God is the only author. Whatever authority man possesses must be under the headship of God. So that authority is not their own. Remember what Jesus told Pontius Pilate? You only have this authority because it was granted to you by my father. Otherwise, you wouldn't have any, any authority over me. So all this authority you see all over the world has been granted by God to the people. They're under the headship of God. It's not their own. No way. It's not their own. And who are we talking about here? The Pharisees and the Sadducees, right? The scribes. Because they, they enjoy their authority. They, they want to be greeted. They, they occupy prominent places. They just, they just enjoy. They just enjoy the authority. But there's no responsibility. Did you know that authority goes along with responsibility? Even at workplace, right? If you have the authority, then you're responsible. Because if, if you only have authority and not responsible, what does that take? You are, you are no, you're useless. Useless authority, exercise of authority. You're just saying it, and saying it, and saying it, and not doing it. Like the Pharisees and the scribes. Okay? Now, the promise of freedom. What did Jesus say? Jesus says, I am the truth. And this truth shall set you free. Right? The truth shall set you free. <coughs> Why do you think the thieves would get into a house very silently. They don't make any noise. And they normally do that when nobody is home or when everybody is asleep. Why? They don't want to get caught. They don't want to get caught. They don't want to be seen as doing what they were doing. Why? Why, why don't they want to be seen? Because they know that what they're doing is not good. And they're not free. Because they're so scared. That that's not freedom. So the, the, the freest person is 
The freest person is the one who leaves the truth. <clears throat> when you are, when you haven't done anything bad, let's say, oh gee, when was that? Last night? Yeah, last night they featured on CNN the Catholic priests who were who were accused of sexual molestations. And this and, and they even followed this priest all the way out to Mexico. And this, this priest no longer a priest, he was um, he was um, <coughs> terminated or he was he was expelled from the priesthood. And they were following it, but the way they presented it, like as if the church is uh, full of sin and that the church is hopelessly sinful. The way they presented it. And and plain say what the priest does, what the church does now is if there's any if any priest is accused, they just get rid of the person without trial. Imagine that. That's why you feel sorry for the priests because they're, they're dedicated their lives to to the priesthood, to, to the call, and yet anyone, anyone, even boys or girls, can can make such an allegation, and this priest will lose everything that uh, he enjoys. Can I have to prove it without burden of proof, without even the chance to defend himself? What they do is they. They push you to the side, relieve you of all your responsibilities, and and who knows what they do to you. But that's just so unfair, isn't it? But that's what's happening. Because otherwise the church is accused of harboring these priests, even if they that's what they were alleging. Because the, some people are okay, you're accused, so they, they remove it, he try he gets transferred. And there's one who was a, a Paris priest over in Orlando, and there, there was women and drugs involved. And he was removed, and then he was transferred. And then eventually we heard that he was transferred to another Paris down south, in Fort Lauderdale. I don't know if that's the correct way to do it. But it's tough. And you know who is the truth? The truth is Jesus. Monday, today. Have you heard of it? Scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. What does that mean? When you do anything, when you do anything, don't you at least think of something of, of your self-interest? Do you ever think of that? No, let's be honest. When you do something good, don't you at least remember, call to mind something that's for your own benefit, for your own self-interest? <clears throat> you know, one friend of ours, uh, had kidney stones and she was rushed to the emergency and the husband went on the ambulance and went to Passaic Hospital and then called us from the ambulance to the cell phone what happened? Da -da -da -da. okay, where are you? to the hospital so obviously they had no ride back home because they went, he went with the ambulance and so a few minutes after we just got and then we followed and we went to the hospital. And it was fine. She had an MRI and a CD scan. And then they said the doctor said that it, it should be over now because the, the stone had passed. Mm -hmm. It's passing. And they put anti pain. And there, she was no, no, not pain anymore, then she was given prescription medicine, just to take this and you should be fine, and she was released. She was not confined. So when she was released, 
It's a good thing that we were there, so we gave them the right, we took them home. I felt good that night. Of course, uh, there was work next day, and it was like almost 12 midnight. We were still out on the street. But I felt good. Why? Because I feel that I have done something good for one of my neighbors. And I'll be so unique if I don't even think of my own self-interest. What does that mean? At the back of your head, you probably think, ah, this guy owes me one. Right? As a human being, we naturally feel that. That's, that's the meaning of, a scratch your back, you scratch my back too. You can't reach your back, not all parts of your back, right? So you have to buy a back scratcher from the dollar store. <laughs> you, <can't. laughs> you don't need anyone to scratch your back. But that's just a saying. Jesus invites us to think outside the human box. And more, because that's a human, that's so human. <clears throat> when, when you do something good to me, very good to me, and then I did something bad that you simply didn't like. Don't you remember the good things that you did to the person? Be honest. Right? If I've been doing good things for this person, and then this person came back and did something horrible to me. I'm only a human being and I would think, Oh gee, after doing, I did all these good things to him and now this is what he did to me. That's human, that's, uh, that's, the, that's the box we're talking about, that's the human box. Because the, the divine box is not like that. The divine box is, I'll scratch your back and you don't have to scratch mine. Difference. So, this human box. The poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. 